What's up, guys? Today, you're going to get ready with me, Charnice. I'm so happy to be back. It's been a little minute, so this was long overdue. So today, I am going to um, take some photos. So I'm going to just, like, talk to you guys before I do that because I've been neglecting y'all. And, <laughs> and, yeah, so let's do this. So yeah, guys, I'm just going to talk about, you know, how medical school is going so far. I just started my, I just started my last term of, I mean, what? <laughs> I just started my second term of medical school and it was, it was a little tough for me. So, um... I didn't receive my grade back for my exam. We had our ER module. So ER stands for endocrine and reproductive. And um, the endocrine portion was okay, you know, like we had to learn about all the hormones and where they're coming from and all the different axes. And like, that's cool. But like reproduction, y'all, reproduction is very complicated okay and um i don't know what's more complicated if like the histology is more complicated or the anatomy but something just ain't right <laughs> um you know it's uh it's pretty tough so i did what i could i studied as hard as i could i was diligent and um i did my best so we'll see how that goes We'll see how that goes. So now we are in our, we're in a new module called digestive and metabolism. I actually like this kind of stuff. We did a little bit of it during MSAP. So I'm like familiar with the histo. Um, but the thing about this module is, so at SGU, we have a lot of exams. So like we, I mean, I feel like I said every month school, let me stop. We have exams like every three weeks, like every two to three weeks. But in this DM module, our first exam is um, not going to start until, our first exam is not going, like we have, our first exam is going to be after four weeks. So we don't have like, you know, we gotta have a lot of stamina. We gotta make sure we're staying on top of the material because like, that's a pretty long time, you know, in between exams. So we'll see how that goes. We have lots of um, labs and small groups for that section, so yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be another challenging one, but that's med school, right? That's what we signed up for. <laughs> so one question that I get a lot is how is virtual medical school? And like Honestly, I'm so used to it. So like this time last year, I started the MSAT program. If you're interested in what that is, or if you're um, attending SGU and you have to do the MSAT program, you can um, find my video on it. But basically this time last year, I started the MSAT program and the MSAT program um, is virtual as well. So I started medical school virtually and because I started medical school virtually, I was like already on a roll. I was on a roll. I was I was ready to, um, I was ready for anything because you know coronavirus just came out and it was being talked about that we may have to start um, virtual medical school. So I was ready for anything, and um, I was I was used to already learning um you know sgu style virtually so now that we started virtual medical school it definitely is different like um it's a 
it's a different kind of vibe where things are more in depth of course and you know we're learning more material and we're not stopping um so it's virtual medical school is definitely tough but i can't really like compare it to in-person medical school because i've never been there before i've never been in that position so yeah everything's virtual our classes are virtual um our labs are virtual i know some people have expressed that they would like to um you know be able to have lab in person maybe like SGU could reach out to the institutions that they're affiliated with in the U.S. and um, offer some like in-person opportunities, but I don't know how that's going on the school's end. So for right now, everything everything's virtual. People also ask me like, what's my what's my schedule like? So I don't know if you can see in the back. <laughs> okay, brows. Sorry. I don't know if you can see in the background, but um, I have my little calendar over there. But basically, um, a regular day for me in virtual medical school is like, uh, I wake up around 6.45. And then I have lecture at seven. Okay, so lecture is not seven o'clock for everyone. It's seven o'clock for me because... <laughs> All right, so the school, our lectures used to be in the morning, 10, 8, 10, yeah, 10 to 12. But the school changed their schedule so that they could have lecture in the afternoon. And you know, school is virtual, so a lot of people are still like, um, you know, living with their families. Some of, some people have kids, they're like picking their kids up from school, stuff like that. So a lot of people gave some feedback to the school saying that, you know, um, this might not be ideal because, you know, um, my schedule doesn't allow me to like have class in the afternoon. Cool. So the school said, all right, fine. So if you don't have time to do class in the afternoon um, or like 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. AST time, then we're gonna send out a link for everyone and you can put what time zone you're in so that we can um, make sure that we're putting everybody in the right um, lecture slot. So either you're in regular lecture, which is at like, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or you're in um, alternative lecture, which is at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So me, so then, okay, so SGU uses AST, because that's Grenada time. But they sent the, they sent the, um, the survey for your time zone in UTC. So me, being the smart young lady that I am, put that I was in UTC, some UT, whatever. Basically, I put the wrong time zone. So then they were like, oh, you're an alternative lecture. And then I was like, oh, great. It's going to be like earlier. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to have like 8 a.m. lecture. But then I did a little bit of research and realized that lecture is actually at 7 a.m. <laughs> so the joke was on me. So yeah, I wake up at 6.45. I go to lecture at 7 a.m. I'm like half asleep, but I go, cause I'm responsible. And yeah, so lecture is seven to 9 a.m. And then after lecture, I work out in my living room. And then I eat breakfast. And by the time I'm done with breakfast, it's like, it's like, um, maybe like 11, 10, 30. Then I start my day. I review my lectures. I post read. 
<sighs> and I just sit here and study forever. Really, truly. Um, sometimes I study with my friends. Um, sometimes I FaceTime my friend and do practice questions with her. Um, but yeah, I really just, <laughs> I really just study all day. Hello? Yeah, and my day, my day usually ends around maybe, I think my day ends around like 11. So I study and um, I have, you know, I take like an hour for dinner. Um, I take an hour for lunch and then, you know, I'm, I'm studying, I'm doing practice problems. I'm reviewing my practice problems and then by like 11 o'clock I try to go to bed so that's my day nothing exciting but you know I make sure I have a well-rounded day I make sure that I interact with my family <laughs> because I do live with them I interact with my family I take time to exercise I take my breaks for meals and that's it <laughs> nothing super exciting so yeah if you're on clubhouse and oh another thing I wanted to talk about is step two CS being discontinued so um step two okay so usmle because <laughs> this goes back usmle um announced back in 2020 they announced that they were making step one pass fail and so this was really big news because for a lot of people so, okay, this is really big news because residencies use step one, or historically, they've used step one as like a big marker for choosing, um, you know, for looking at ap um, applications to their, to their programs. So it was a big... Um, kind of contributing factor to, you know, what specialty you'd possibly be going into after your, um, after your medical school, your medical schooling. So for people who, you know, go, didn't go to like top 10 medical schools or like IMGs especially or um I think some like osteopathic schools were worried about it which um I mean osteopathic students were worried about it which I don't think they should have to be that worried because um they have like the complex and and like they're usually like seen on the same level as like US MD medical school programs but it worried a lot of people and it worried a lot of IMGs because, you know, at this point we were like, well, what's going to make us, if we don't work really hard on step one and get a, re and a really high score that people can see instead of just a pass, what would really like, um, you know, set us apart from the competition or prove to these residencies that we are, um, eligible or like you know that that we're good enough to be in their residency programs so for a lot of questions and not many answers so that was back i can't remember the month but that was um that was way back when in 2020 and now us emily announced that step two cs is discontinued they're no longer requiring it so the thing was that with them saying that 
step one was canceled everyone figured okay step two will will um count more like it will be it will be more of a factor when the residencies are sitting down and looking at applications cool sounds great but step two has two parts cs and cf ck and now cs is canceled so what does that really mean so there were lots of questions not really many answers and um recently we were on clubhouse if you are an img and you're on clubhouse please be sure to join the group imgs connect because um we do have really good conversations on there there are not only students but graduates of international medical schools who are um, working diligently to help um, current students on their path so um join our group but basically we were talking about what that really meant the discontinuation of the exam and basically the long and short of it is that that announcement is not really that big of a deal the change um in step two cs because basically step two cs is an exam that was used to assess if um applicants to US residencies were proficient in English. So um, you had to like fly to a center that offered the step two CS exam, which cost a lot of money, sit down for this test, which most people pass with flying colors and prove that you're proficient in English. So basically USMLE was like, whatever, we don't need this exam. Let's just cut it out. So a lot of physicians are saying, are telling students who go to IMGs, don't really worry about that. What you should worry about is the fact that step one is pass fail. <laughs> um, not necessarily worry, but you know, now is our time to just like, you know, enhance our application a bit. So if you didn't get if you didn't get, um, you know, lots of experience, like in terms of research and clinical experience before you um, went off to medical school, they're encouraging students to get that kind of research. And I know, I mean, get those kind of opportunities, do some research, make sure that when you do your core rotations that you have strong relationships with um your doctors that you encounter there. Also, they they um, stress volunteer work, but a lot of international medical students don't have that kind of time to do research like over the summer or anything like that. So, you know, they, we kind of brainstormed, like maybe you could reach out to people about, um, about um, remote opportunities, like maybe some literature reviews, or if you can do, um, you know, some kind of like, Something that can fit into your schedule, but it's meaningful and it's also like giving you the experience that you need that you can, that can look good on your um your application to these residencies. So yeah, that's what we talked about yesterday in IMG's Connect, and so basically, don't really stress about step two CS, but just continue to work diligently and get good grades while you're in medical school and shine. Whew, all right, y'all, I'm almost done. Guys, I realized that I haven't been telling you exactly what I'm putting on my face. So I'm gonna make sure that that is all in the description. going for a light beat and I might not show you guys when I put on my lashes because that's a mess it's a hot mess <laughs> y'all don't want to see that so yeah guys another thing about um, USMLE making these changes is that I really feel like 
this pandemic has taught us a lot of things, right? I think it has taught a lot of um, the world that we are in need of doctors. <laughs> that, you know, this, no one should ever go without care. No many people, so many people didn't have to die. And um, I think that they're being very intentional about making sure that um, pathways are open in terms of like accrediting international medical schools and just making sure that um, we can have doctors available <laughs> because at the end of the day, we not ready, we were not ready for a pandemic and we need to be like, this is the world that we live in and things are happening every day. So anytime we could be hit with something like that again. So yeah, to my fellow IMGs, don't worry. We don't have time to worry. <laughs> Just study hard, stay diligent, and make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Because guess what? You wanted to be a doctor, right? At the end of the day, you will be a doctor. So I'm proud of you. I'm here for you. If you guys have any questions about my experience um, or my thoughts, because I'm not an expertise at the end of the day. I'm not like working for these schools. I just um know what i want for me and i know what i want for fellow imgs and i know what you guys have to contribute um so yeah let me know and after this i'm gonna do my hair really quickly and then i'm gonna show you guys the final look